Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. I'm Natalie Case, your liturgist this morning. Thank you for joining our worship service today. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Please join in our call to worship this morning. Lord, teach us to pray so that we know your spirit is always with us. So we know that we cannot flee from your presence. So we know that in heaven you are there. So when we are in the midst of struggle or soaring as the wind, we will know that your hand is the guide. So we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Let us be together in the spirit of prayer. Glorious and giving God, you are our source of vitality and strength. Create in us the unwavering loyalty to embrace your presence upon us and to know your guidance forever within our hearts, that we may delight in living a life that you have declared for us to live, full of the bread of life, your son, Jesus Christ, and to share that same fullness of life with those you have placed around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now opening hymn will be Be Thou My Vision. Our first scripture reading is from Matthew 6, 11. Give us today our daily bread. And now our second scripture reading is from John 6, 25 through 33. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves, and had your fill. 
Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to inter- eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. May we be blessed in our hearing and understanding of God's holy word. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Jesus loves little children. We come to the time of our service where we like to invite our children to get together for a message for them, but we also want to invite our young at heart. This is a message for you as well. And this month we have spent our time and will continue to talk about the Lord's Prayer. So I want to give you a way to remember how to pray and who to pray for, because sometimes we get stuck. And we might just pray for ourselves, which is okay. We get to pray for ourselves. But we also want to pray for other people too. So this is called the Five Finger Prayer. Now you may have heard this before, but it's a really good thing to remember. So let's think about this again. Let's go through our fingers. First, this finger, our thumb. This is the finger that is closest to you, the closest to your heart. So when you think of this finger, you're going to think about your family and your friends, maybe your grandparents, aunts and uncles, all those people that are really close to your heart, that's who you're going to pray for when you touch your thumb. And next, we have our index finger, and that's kind of our pointed, pointy finger. And when we think about this finger, we're going to think about and pray about the people that have directed us in our lives and guide us, our teachers at school, Uh, our leaders in the church and our ministers, all those people that guide us. Your parents can fall into that category again too. But anybody that teaches you things and guides you, that's who you're going to pray for there. And then we come to our middle finger, and it's usually the tallest finger. And we're going to pray for our leaders in our world, the leaders at our schools, the leaders in our churches, the leaders in in our country, in our world. We're going to pray for those people because everybody needs prayer, right? Then we come to this finger, and your ring finger is the weakest of all your fingers. Sometimes it has trouble standing up by itself, but it's, it's the very weakest. So when you think of that finger, we're going to think of the people in our lives or in our community that maybe have lost something important to them or someone important to them. Maybe you see someone that doesn't have a home like you do. Or anybody that's struggling or sad. Maybe one of your friends is sad about something. That's what the people we're going to pray for when we think of that finger. And then we get to our little pinky finger. And that is the finger that's going to remind you to pray for yourself. Because it's okay to ask God for things for yourself. But we're going to put these people first. And then we're going to pray for ourselves. And that's The five-finger prayer is just a good way for you to remember how to pray and who to pray for and to remember all those important people in your life that make a difference. Let's pray together now. Loving God, we ask for you to look over and comfort the people in our lives, those people that we love, that we see all the time, the people that we don't even know in our world, the strangers that need our prayers, that need our help. We pray for them. We pray for our friends, our families. We pray for our pets. We pray 
that you will be with us every day in our lives. Guide us, show us your love and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, little friends. Jesus loved the little children of the world. What a fellowship, what a joy divine we bring on the everlasting. What a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arm. Lean on me, lean on me, safe and secure from all alarms. Lean on Jesus, lean on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting God, open our hearts and our minds to hear and to understand your holy word and blessings for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to tell you a story this morning. This is a story about a gentleman that lived many years ago. He was a kind man, very smart, both look smart and street smart. And he wandered around, but not without purpose or without meaning. But wherever he went, people were drawn to him. And he would go around in different villages and meet with people, and he would tell these great and wonderful stories. But his stories were all about people. They were stories that others needed to hear to help them in their own lives. And he became known for his gracious heart and his giving soul. Now he had some close friends, but he also had enemies. But he had the gift of knowing people, complete strangers. He knew them better than they knew themselves. Now to them, he was this mysterious stranger. But to him, the people that he would meet, those People were his friends. He could instantly see and know their value. And he became a great teacher. And he would teach these wonderful lessons and wonderful stories, just making the world and the people in it better. And he taught the most wonderful prayer to some of his friends. And that prayer goes like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, 
I'm guessing you have figured out that this gentleman is Jesus. And as we continue our series on the Lord's Prayer, today we're going to focus on Give Us This Day Our Daily Bread. I want to ask you, have you ever listened to someone say the Lord's Prayer? Perhaps during their own prayer time or during worship? Have you ever just really focused on what they're saying and how they're saying it. And if you haven't, I encourage you to, giving you permission to eavesdrop a little bit. Listen to where they emphasize words, the way they say it and recite it. Because everybody says it a little bit different. There isn't a right way or a wrong way. Many of you remember Lucille Pitt, Beautiful lady with a beautiful soul, one of our church members from the beginning. I will never forget the day that we had a service in the fellowship hall, rather informal service. And I was sitting next to Lucille, and we got to the part in the service where we said the Lord's Prayer. And she said that prayer with such love and such meaning that I actually stopped saying it myself just to listen to her say that. This is such an important prayer. And it's what Jesus wants us to pray. It's what Jesus teaches us to pray. So let's look at this for a minute. We begin with give us. Jesus says, give us. And Jesus says that boldly and with confidence. He says, give us. He doesn't say, if you don't mind, if it's okay, if I'm worthy. He says, give us. It's important, and he prays it with determination. That isn't always easy to pray with such determination and such gusto, because oftentimes we're in a place of such need There's tears, and and it's hard to pray those words with such strength. But Jesus teaches us to pray that way, and he shows us how in his actions, his actions of praying boldly. He doesn't do it with anger. He doesn't do it demanding. He does it with enthusiasm, enthusiasm for the life that we have, and for what God can put into that life, what God is going to give us in return for the asking. And then he says, us, give us this day. Now, often when we're praying this, we're thinking of what we need. And that's okay, but Jesus takes that one step further and says, give us this day. This is not just a prayer for ourselves but for others in your life, strangers that you haven't met. And then Jesus goes on and says, this day. Give us this day. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. Jesus is concerned with each day in itself. Now, that says a lot about worry, something that we all tend to be good at. If we look at Matthew's gospel, we we read about do not worry in Matthew 6. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. You can depend on God to meet you each day. Wherever you are, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, God will meet you 
this day. And the next part of that is our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Again, it's our daily bread. It isn't just my daily bread or your daily bread. Jesus prays for our daily bread to fill you up with God's love, God's protection, encouragement, with all the great things that God places inside of you so that you can live your days as a child of God. And this is also a prayer of trust, trusting that that protection, that that need, the needs that you have will be met, that you will be filled up each day. The other night I was eating with my family and before the meal, they brought out a big basket full of beautiful rolls. And it was full and they were wavy on top and the butter was melting on them and they were shiny and warm and soft. And we all just kind of stared at them. We wanted to eat them, of course, but we knew they would fill us up before the meal. Now you're probably asking, we did eat them, but I was thinking about bread and its symbolism. When I was a little girl, one of the treats in our family after our meal was gravy bread. Now, if you don't know what gravy bread is, it's just a piece of bread with gravy poured over it. But my sister and my brother and I, we loved gravy bread. It was a treat, a reward at the end of our meal for doing good. I suppose for eating our vegetables. And it's such symbolism in the Bible, the bread, the reward, the treat, a filling up of God, connecting with you and giving you what you need in your life. There are seven words in the Hebrew Bible that reference bread. There's three Greek words. So I started thinking about this and how many references there are in the Bible that pertain to bread and, and that symbolism. And I didn't go through and count them all, but I did use our friend Google. So this number may be off just a little bit, but we love Google, but um, for reference sake, we're going to say there's 492 references to bread in the original language of the Bible. 492. You can see the importance. Throughout the Bible, bread is that symbol that God will provide for you. Will provide, not maybe, but will. We use bread in our worship service, in communion, as that symbol of the body of Christ. Now earlier, our scripture reading from Natalie, we heard the Gospel of John and she read about Jesus as the bread of life. I want to continue on in that passage. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus is the bread of life. He is all that we need to fill us up. I wonder when we say this prayer, just for fun, if when we got to this line, we took out bread and inserted Jesus. So instead of give us this day our daily bread, we said give us this day our daily Jesus. Our daily walk with Jesus. Our daily prayer with Jesus. Our daily laugh with Jesus. Our daily cry with Jesus your time of silence with Jesus. Just as bread is the staple in our diet, in our lives, 
Jesus is the staple of your life, the center of today, this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us pray. Holy and giving God, you fill us with the bread of life, the love of your Son, the center of all that life stands for. As you direct the sun to rise in the morning, direct our ways to focus on you so that we will embrace what you fill us with on this day and to know that you will give us what we need to go through each of our days as you desire us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let's sing together our hymn of response, Spirit Song. Let us join together in the spirit of prayer and let us begin with a few moments of silent prayer to lift the joys and concerns of our own hearts up to God. Let us pray. God of grace and love, we open our eyes to find you in a world that needs your presence, your guidance. Fill us with what we need each day to be the hands to help the sick, the eyes for those that need guidance, the heart for those that are searching for you. Hear our prayers as we lift up those who are feeling the struggle of loneliness. May they experience your goodness and know that you are forever walking with them. Be with the children of our church and our community. As their little lives become part of this great big world, may they be able to giggle and play and find safety and love from those around them. May they know you, God, and the love that you bring to them, and may they love you in return. 
We pray for those who are facing the end of their life as we know life to be. Help them to feel your comfort and your love as you lead them home. We pray for kindness, something that is so simple and yet is often so difficult to discover in this uncertain world. We pray that your children, young and old, will not only give the gift of kindness, but will receive it in their daily lives. Make clear the hearts and minds of your people so that all may see the beauty of your grace and forgiveness and the way in which you re reach out to all. Fill them with your loving spirit. We pray that your will will forever be our will. We lift these prayers up to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In response to God's still speaking word, let us affirm our faith with the words of Paul from Ephesians chapter four. There is one hope, one calling to which we are called. The, the hope, hope in our lives is Jesus, Jesus and the, the call, call we, we must answer is God's. Is God's. God. There is one faith, one hope, one Lord of us all. The, the Lord, Lord of our, our lives is Jesus. Jesus. There is one baptism, one father, one mother of all. The, the creator, creator who calls, calls us as his God. God. We are one body, one family, one church, woven, woven by, by the spirit, spirit bonds with bonds, bonds of, peace. of peace. With Christ's children throughout all of this earth, we, we are, are one body, body unity, in unity and love. And love. And love. Amen. And now, may the light of Christ shine within you. May God's love be present in all that you do. And may God guide you and lead you and fill your day with all that you need. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>